Hi Legacy! So recently I was in one of my online classes and my teacher was talking about breath prayer, which is a type of prayer where you breathe in and you have a, a word or a short phrase that you pray as you breathe in and then another one that you pray as you breathe out. And she used the example of Emmanuel. And when she said that, it just struck me that that word is usually not used, you know, outside of Christmas time. But it, it's applicable to us all, all around the year, you know. Um, and when she was saying that, it got me thinking about how it, that word Emmanuel is so applicable to us right now. As uh, Rona feels like it's taken over the world. Um, and there's so much fear and also Easter in the midst of all this it's just it's so interesting because when you think about death and jesus dying that's one of the most human experiences is death in in a weird way i don't want to sound morbid but it's true it's like god is existent beyond death right but we experience death and so for jesus to come and to be for god to become a human and then to come and die is one of the most human experiences that, that he could come and experience with us and to understand and to to walk in that. Um, it just, to me, that embodies that word Emmanuel in such a deep way. And so when I was thinking about my favorite part of the Easter story, I was looking through it and I think different parts of it impact me diff at different points in my life. But um, there's this part in John 18 where Jesus is talking to Pontius Pilate and he, Pontius Pilate is like, are you a king? And Jesus is, says, I have this, I, my kingdom is not of this world. Like he's saying my kingdom is, is above what you can understand. And um, he says, I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. And so this section of the Easter story is so unique to me because it just shows how much Jesus was more than a man. He was more than human in the fact that he he was divine. He he Jesus is God yet human. And that's such a, a paradox in some senses where it's hard for us to wrap our minds around it. But I love that part knowing that Jesus understands our humanity so deeply yet also he is so far above it and he's so so good and so powerful enough to conquer death um and i just wanted to leave you with an encouragement of in this time of fear with everyone panicking um and, and a future that feels so unknown and for some people facing the death of a loved one or just facing such grief um emmanuel god is with us and he understands so deeply what we are going through. He understands the fear, the panic, the anxiety, the uncertainty uh, that we can be feeling. And yet at the same time, he is God and he is so far above everything that we are experiencing to be able to give us a security um, that he is above it all. That he knows and he does see farther into the future where we don't know. Um, and so there's a safety in that. So I just want to leave you with that encouragement to take refuge and find comfort in the fact that God knows our humanity deeply, but he also is God. Um, yeah, hopefully we can meet together soon again. Bye. To the way I was Oh, I'm gonna live like my chains are gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Done, done He is risen, it is done And I sing hallelujah
is a weapon that will overcome Oh, I'm gonna shout like the battle's won So fall back, devil, cause your time is done Oh, I'm gonna live like the stone is gone
thank you My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, I needed healing Now your love is the air that I am breathing I have a future, my eyes are open And when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Resurrected King is 
Easter, everyone. So glad you're a part of Legacy Church this morning. We just hope that you will connect with us on the address at the bottom of your screen, or you can just hit the wow face on Facebook and we will reach out to you. But we would love to connect with you this coming week. Also, we would like to remind you about our small group ministry. We have small groups that meet through Zoom on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We invite you to go to the website, check it out, find a group that fits you, and tune in with that group. And finally, just a reminder, if you would like to participate in this ministry, we would love it if you would partner with us. If you would go to legacychurch.online slash give, you can be a part of what God is doing through Legacy Church. All right, we're now going to just jump right in to Pastor Kyle's message. This is part two of a series, Stop the Spiral. Hey kids, Pastor Brittany here. Stay tuned to the end of Pastor Kyle's message today, and we're going to read a Bible story and learn a cool prayer. See you then. Well, hey there, and welcome 
to our first Easter service as a church. I am so glad you're here. My name is Kyle Papano. I'm the pastor of Legacy Church, and I want to welcome you to our online worship experience. Happy Easter. Hey, this morning, I want to dive into a passage of scripture that I really hesitated on preaching on during this series, but you'll see why in a few minutes. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The title of my message this morning is Peace Together Peace. A couple of months ago, um, I really felt like God was telling us we were supposed to study this topic as a whole, and I began to study the, the, the intimacy of peace. And this message came to me, and I have been waiting for months to preach this to you, and so I'm so excited to see what God's going to speak to us. But let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we commit this time to you. I pray that you would speak, that what you want to be said would be heard. Father, we thank you for your life, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And we anticipate your coming again. But until then, would you teach us what it means not to be anxious, but to be full of your peace and your joy. We love you and we praise you, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, do me a favor and type amen. Let's try to interact a little more today. I'd love to see who's watching with us. Put it in the comments. Where are you watching from? Who are you watching with? We want to build a community during this time of distancing. Don't be distant, but be a part of what God is doing. Since I was a little kid, and I mean little kid, I have always enjoyed building things. Whether it was Legos or Connects, building models, um, Pinewood Derby cars. I mean, I love building it all. And then as I grew older, I ended up working with wood. I love building mirror frames, and I built a, um, a headboard for my wife after we got married. It's just something that I really love to do. At the end of the day, I love to step back and be able to see what I have accomplished over the day. As we dive into week two of Stop the Spiral, I wanna look at something that we can build together. Now, put it in the comments, who, who enjoyed last week? I hope you did, we got a lot of good feedback. I'm really enjoying what God is speaking to us in this season, um, but I hope you took something from it. Today is Easter, and so we're going to look at the resurrection story, but maybe from a different perspective than you've heard it before. I want to look at the last thing that Jesus said to his disciples before he went to go to the cross. And then I want to look at the first thing he said after he returned to them when he had risen. I don't know about you, but if someone that I loved or cared deeply for came to me and said, I'm going to die, it would probably trigger me. It would probably cause my anxiety level to raise up a little bit. And that's the very thing that we overlook when we talk about the Last Supper and what Jesus did with his disciples. He was saying, I'm going to die. I'm going away from you. I'm leaving you. I've only spent three years doing ministry with you, and now it's time for me to go. And the disciples are busy saying, Jesus, wait, no, don't do that. We need you here. Could you imagine the anxiety level that they had? See, there's a lot of times that anxiety has two different levels that I see in my own life. It's the high level. It's the fear of the future or, or like future events to come. And I get really nervous about what's going to happen. What, what do I need to get done before then? And then there's the other lower level of anxiety, the closer to home level of anxiety. That is, I'm fearful about what is happening now, what I'm going through today. Both of these lines of thinking, though, come from the same place. And it's an insecurity and this voice in my head that says, I am powerless. I don't know. Am I the only one who deals with that? I hope not. You might actually be powerless. But it is in that very moment that Jesus, the one that's not hanging on the cross, the one that resurrected, the one that we're celebrating today, kicks in the door and says, my grace is sufficient for you. Come on, put it in the comments. Say, his grace is sufficient for me. We need to believe this over and in our own lives together. I made a goal at the beginning of studying this, uh, this sermon series that I would not preach this verse out of Philippians out of fear of it sounding like a blanket statement. Don't fear. Don't be anxious. I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to communicate the depth and the gravity of of anxiety, but I also want to understand the weight and the power behind peace. 
See, this verse specifically came up in almost every one of the interviews that I did. I got to interview a dozen people struggling with a bunch of different aspects of anxiety, but all of them said, this verse comes up a lot. And I think it's said by well-intentioned Christians to fix a problem temporarily. They make it a blanket statement. They make it this, don't do that. And I didn't want to communicate that. So instead of focusing on don't be anxious, I want to focus on the other part of the verse. The part that says, pray about everything. In every situation, go to God. In every piece of anxiety, go to God. See, it says in this scripture that when anxiety comes into contact with prayer, it loses its power. When I read this verse over and over like I do when I'm studying, something jumped out at me other than don't be anxious. It was in every situation, like one at a time. God wants to know intimately what you're going through. In fact, his peace is more intimate than just throwing one blanket statement over the entire thing and calling it good. That's what the scripture is telling us in every situation. Present your request to God. In every, situ- in every piece of your anxiety, go to God and say, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm struggling today. I need you to speak to this. I need your peace in my own life. I believe your peace can look like a bunch of different things. It could look like a blanket. This is the word picture that I got. Um, a lot of times when, when hyperactive kids um, have an episode, they need to be held. They need to be swaddled. They, sometimes they even use a weighted blanket to hold them in place just so that they know that everything's going to be okay. And then when that moment passes, they can get up and they're fine. I believe the peace of God can be a weighted blanket to you, to your situation that you're going through. It can be a blanket to hold you over. I think it can also be something that you borrow. I got this idea a couple of years ago when I was going through some frustrating times in my own life. I found that as I was stepping into a tumultuous work environment, I could borrow the peace that I had in my home and my marriage to inform the way that I was working at work. The peace that I had in this relationship actually extended and I could borrow that peace and employ it at work. So now instead of it being a hostile work environment or a frustrating work environment that you're stepping into, you can take the peace from somewhere else in your life and employ it into that circumstance. It might be that work is the place that's chill for you. Maybe the kids at home are going crazy and you need peace there. So I believe it's a blanket to cover you. It can be something that you borrow just to get you through a season. But I think the most important thing that Jesus says is he wants to build peace in your life, to steady you and to protect you. See, at the end of the verse, it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. That means when you're going through something and you're saying, God, what? nothing makes sense right now. He goes, yeah, that's good. I have a peace for that. I know how to minister to you. I know what to say to you. I know what to do in this situation. But he says that kind of peace, the overwhelming peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Jesus wants to build a peace within you and he really only does that one way. You ready for that? It's you spending time with him in prayer. Jesus told his disciples he wanted to build peace in them. In fact, he told them that when he said, I'm leaving. He says in John chapter 14, verse 27, I am leaving you with a gift peace of mind and peace of heart. He actually made the distinction that you can struggle with anxiety in your mind, but there's a peace that needs to come from your heart. So he's going to cover both with his supernatural overwhelming peace. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. See that? He's saying, I'm going to give you a peace so you don't have to be anxious. So Paul says, don't be anxious, but go talk to Jesus. And Jesus replies saying, I'll give you peace so that you don't have to be anxious. It's a both and approach. Then after he dies and resurrects, which is what we're celebrating today, by the way, he comes back to his disciples in the coolest way possible. And the first thing he says when he gets back is peace be with you. 
Check this out in John chapter 20, verse 19. He said that, it says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. Gangster move. Just shows up in the middle of where they are at. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hand and in his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And then again, he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. So the first thing that he needed to reinstall into his disciples after he had died was peace. The the last thing he told them was peace be with you. It's going to be okay. I'm going to give you a gift of peace. And then they forgot that. He died and they freaked out. And a couple of days later, he raises up from the dead, shows up in the midst of their anxiety. They're all together in a room hiding out of fear and anxiety. And he says, peace be with you. He speaks that word repeatedly over them. And I want you to hear, he is speaking that word repeatedly over you today. So your peace can look like a bunch of different things. Maybe it looks like a blanket. Maybe it looks like something borrowed, but I hope it looks like something that is building in your life. But I don't want you to forget that your peace was purchased. Hear me when I say this. Jesus died for no other reason than to restore you with him, which ultimately brings us peace in our lives. He wants a relationship with you so bad that he gave up his life. Almost a year ago, it was last Easter Sunday, my son Levi was born. And the day after he was born, I recognized a new facet of my relationship with God. See, when I got married to Brittany, the next day I understood Christ's love for his bride, the love that he has for his church. I understood that so well because I had just gotten married. I know that I want to be with my wife. But then the day after Levi was born, I understood again the heart of the father for his children. The heart that he has to restore peace in our lives. The fact that he would do absolutely anything to be with us. In fact, he did do absolutely anything. He sent his only true son to die in our place. And I love that the story never ends there. I love that God never writes scripture in a way that leaves us in the middle of our problems. He never leaves us in our anxiety. He always offers hope. He always offers the next step, how to get closer to me. The problem is right now in the season that we're going through, we are letting one small thing throw off our entire world. And when your view of God can be blocked by one small thing, something needs to change. And it needs to change in our prayer lives. I don't want you to hear me say, don't be anxious. That's it. I want you to hear me say, don't be anxious because if you will pray, prayer will overpower the tension, the frustration, that choking feeling that anxiety brings. Because don't forget that anxiety is not the root, it's the symptom. There's something deeper that God is wanting to do, and he's wanting to bring peace into our fears. He's wanting to bring peace into our sadness. When we started writing this sermon series, we didn't want it to be something that was just topical. I want it to be super practical. I want you to get something from it, and I want to give you a couple of ways to deal with anxiety. To take the word that Jesus said, peace, and employ it into your personal life. I got to talk with a bunch of different psychologists and therapists, and the more I talked with them, the more I realized our church needs to hear this. So in two weeks, we are going to have a panel with four different psychologists and therapists, and they're going to get to share their experiences, their studying with us. We get to learn from them, and if you wanna ask questions and get super intimate, you can. You can send us private messages and we'll keep your your questions anonymous. But if you wanna open them up into a live chat, we would love to address them there. But we want you to be able to have a chance to talk with them and hear from a biblical perspective because each of these people are born again believers, working in ministry and expanding the kingdom. You'll get to hear their, their answers to your questions. One of the things that kept popping up in different interviews that I had with people was the struggle with anxiety is being in the moment, right? You're freaking out about future events or what's about to happen. And the way to fight that is being in the moment, be present. 
which by the way, is the only way that you can experience God himself. See, he can be remembered in the past. He can be expected in the future, but he can only be experienced in the present where he is right now with you. So I was talking with one of the therapists and she gave me some really good advice on ways to be present, to, to ground yourself and be present in the moment. Are you ready? She said, find five things that you can see, that you can recognize with your eyes. Then find four things that you can touch. It might be your sleeve or a table or something to ground yourself. Find three things that you can hear, that you can listen, that's happening right now in front of you. Find two things that you can smell. Maybe it's a candle or some fresh baked cookies, but find something there that you can smell. And then finally, find one thing that you can taste. Maybe you eat those cookies. That will bring you into the present. It, it employs all of your senses into this one moment. These are things that you can employ to bring yourself into this moment. It is the same moment, by the way, that God meets you and says, peace be with you. I'm here. The next exercise that I wanna draw your attention to is this. When you are going through an anxious situation, and maybe some of you don't deal with this, so this is something that I want you to practice as well. When you're going through something, picture yourself sitting in your living room, maybe you're there now, maybe it's in your bedroom or your office, I don't know. But find yourself in the room, and then try to locate where Jesus is. Where is he in the room? Is he sitting across from you, talking to you? Is he over at the window looking out, almost ignoring you? Is he sitting right next to you? What I want you to see is what does his face look like? Because a lot of times internally, we put a face on Jesus that he actually doesn't have for us. He's coming to us in the middle of our anxiety saying, peace be with you. I've got what you need. Just sit and talk with me. So my question to you today is this. If he is not sitting right next to you, comforting you, walking through what you're going through together, where is he? And what needs to be done to bring him back to your side? It's gonna take an invitation from you, inviting him into the deepest parts of who you are. And then I want you to see his face that he has for you. He's looking at you with eyes of love and care for his child. And he wants to know intimately what you're going through and help you go through that. I love what A.W. Tozer says. He says, we need never shout across the spaces to an absent God. He is nearer than our own soul and closer than our most secret thoughts. How powerful a word is that? that Jesus wants to be close, so close to you. And so I wanna encourage you, if you are going to therapy, especially if you're going to a Christian therapist, invite them, ask them to pray over you, to pray with you, to see healing in a new way, because I really do believe there's value to going to therapy. There's value in spending time in community, but I really believe more than that, there's value in spending time with God, inviting him into those problems and asking him to work. If you're not going to a therapist, go talk to a pastor. Invite them to pray over you and spend time in prayer with them. And if you don't have anybody to talk to, call me. I'll even put my number here so that you can call me directly. I wanna pray with you. I wanna walk with you through this. I think that God has something specifically in store for you when it comes to anxiety. In my understanding of the father's heart for his kid by way of me having my own son, I realized something. The Difficult decision that God made to give up his own son for something that I would do wrong. God didn't just give up his own son so that your sin and anxiety wouldn't be an issue. He came so that you could overcome it and so that you could spend time with him. He adopted you as his own child himself. I hear the Holy Spirit, the one who brings peace, whispering to us today, peace be with you. And if you want him to bring peace to you, if you want to accept that peace, I want you to start by saying a simple prayer with me. Invite Jesus into your life. There might be some of you who are watching who are dealing with anxiety and you've never had a conversation with God in your life before. I want to encourage you, say this prayer with me, invite him in because Jesus brings peace and he brings healing. That is not to say that there is no value in medication or therapy. I believe God has raised up people for this time to help us walk through these different situations. But I want you to start building peace. That's what God asked us to do. He said, the peace that I have will transcend your understanding. It's so far above what you have, but it will build a wall between you and anxiety. 
I will build a wall between you and your frustration. I will build a wall between you and your sin. And it'll be my peace that covers you. It'll be my peace that guards your hearts and your minds. So right now, would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for setting me free from my sin. But most of all, thank you for raising uh, yourself up from the dead so that I can spend eternity with you. Would you forgive me of my sin? Would you make me like you? Would you take my anxiety? Would you sit with me here and, and heal me? Hey, if you just said that prayer for the first time, <laughs> I can't think of a better Sunday morning to give your life to Christ. So those of us who, who have been in the family, we want to say welcome to you. You're now a brother or sister of ours. You're part of the family of God, and we are going to be praying for you. If you did say that prayer for the first time, do me a favor and fill out the connection card and click the box that said, I gave my life to Christ, or just hit the heart button on the screen. We want to reach out to you and celebrate with you. We're so proud of you. Now, I don't want to overlook the fact that there are some of us who have walked with Christ for a long time and still struggle with this area in our lives. And I want you to know today that Jesus is coming to us and saying, I want to build a wall between you and your anxiety, and that wall will be my peace. It's okay to have peace like a blanket. It's okay to borrow peace from one area of your life and employ it in another. But the most sustainable peace that you can have in your life is one that is built in a relationship of prayer with Christ. I want to pray over you today as well. And if you're struggling, if you're wrestling with this, I want you to text me or put it down in one of the comments or send us a DM. We want to connect with you. We want to pray with you. But one of the best ways to fight anxiety is to get involved in a community. So I want to encourage you, get involved in one of our small groups. We are doing a lot of great study in those things and it's great to build community and build friendships. It's also great just to stay sane and have a good time but I find myself the least anxious right now when I am on calls with other people sharing what I'm going through in my life. And so, Father, I pray right now over those people who, who would say that you are already their father. We claim yet again the resurrection power that you have over the anxiety and the frustration, the fear and the pain in our own lives. So, God, would you be with us? Would you speak over us? Would you use us? And as we sit with you, would you help us build this wall? of peace in our own life? Would we know your peace better than our own breath? We love you and thank you for this. Hey, I wanna say thank you so much for, for being with us during this series. I'm so excited to hear what God has to say in the weeks to come, but please make it a priority in the next couple of weeks. Tune in each week and share and, and comment on things. We wanna know what you're going through. We wanna stay in community, but then also in two more weeks, we are going to have a live panel with psychologists and therapists where we're gonna have a conversation back and forth and you're gonna to get to participate. So please don't forget to be a part of that. Hey, I want you to know that I love you and I'm praying for you. I care about you, and I want to hear how you're doing. So we're going to be reaching out this week. I'd love it if you would reach out to us. We just want to keep this community thing going. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you here next week. Hey, kids. Welcome back. Happy Easter to you. Today we are celebrating Easter, which means that Jesus was raised to life from the dead so that we may have eternal life and that our sins can be forgiven. I don't know how many of you have ever read the Bible story uh, for Easter from Good Friday to Easter Sunday, but I wanna go ahead and read that with you. So let's jump in. All right, I have my beginner's Bible here. I don't know if any of you have a Bible at home. Um, if you don't, reach out to us and we'd love to supply you with one. We're gonna be reading from what happens uh, on starting on Friday all the way to today. So read along with me. It says, Jesus is arrested and crucified. Judas went to the leaders. He asked, how much will you pay if I help you capture Jesus? They said, 30 pieces of silver. So Judas took the money and made a plan. Jesus had gone to his favorite garden to pray. The disciples went along. Jesus prayed, Father, if it is your will, I am ready to give my life so that all the people who trust in me will be saved from their sins. There's Jesus praying in his favorite garden of Gethsemane. Soon Judas arrived with some soldiers. Peter wanted to protect Jesus, but Jesus said, no, I must allow this to happen. All the disciples ran away and the soldiers arrested Jesus. Oh no. They took Jesus to the leaders. The leader said, 
You say that you are the son of God, but we do not believe you. The soldiers took charge of Jesus. They made him carry a big wooden cross. They took him to a place called the skull or Golgotha. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Everyone who loved Jesus was very sad, but they forgot something important. Jesus said he would soon see them again. Do you see how they're crying? They're really sad. But guess what? Today, Easter Sunday, Jesus is risen. After Jesus died, some of his friends laid his body in a big tomb. They sealed it shut with a large round stone. Soldiers guarded the tomb. Do you see the tomb with the soldiers and the big rock? Three days later, the earth shook. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and pushed the stone away from the tomb. Then the angel sat on the stone. When the soldiers saw the angels, they fell to the ground. Could you imagine if you saw an angel? I'd probably fall to the ground too. Mary was walking to the tomb with some of her friends. They saw the angel who said, do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He has risen. Go and tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is alive. On their way, the women saw Jesus. They fell to their knees and worshiped him. Jesus smiled and said, go tell the others that I will see them in Galilee. So Mary ran to tell the disciples. Jesus returns. The disciples had locked themselves in a small room because they were afraid the leaders would send soldiers to arrest them. That was because they hung out with Jesus and they were afraid since Jesus got arrested that they would be arrested too. But suddenly, Jesus appeared to them. He said, peace be with you. They thought he was a ghost, but Jesus said, touch my hands and my feet so that you will know it is really me. The disciples cheered. They were very, very happy to see Jesus again. So this was the story of Easter. On Friday, we celebrated Good Friday, and unfortunately, that was the time where Jesus died. But it wasn't a sad thing, even though people were sad at the time, because Jesus had promised that he would come back and we would see him again. As you read in the story with me, Jesus was raised from the dead and he went to his disciples and said, peace be with you. Today, Pastor Kyle talked about peace and that in times where you feel stressed or things are bugging you or you're anxious, remember last week how we talked about when you're anxious to pray about everything? God says, peace be with you. And that is something that I want to uh, help you to receive today. So let's do a little activity today. I'm gonna teach you an old Quaker prayer and it goes like this. Take your hands and put them out. Can you put them out in front of you? This symbolizes that we are dropping the things that are bugging us, that make us feel anxious or stressed. So we're going to take our hands and just make the drop. And now we're going to put our hands like this and we are going to receive the gift of peace that God has for us. So let's do that together as I pray a prayer with you. All right, put your hands out. Jesus, I pray that you take away these things that are bugging me, take away, I am letting go of the things that make me feel anxious and stressed. And I want to receive the gift of peace that you have for me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So in times where you're feeling really stressed and you're looking for peace, God promises that he is going to give us this, he has already given us this gift of peace. And so in those moments where you're feeling really stressed, remember this prayer, God, take away the things that are not of you, the things that are stressing me out and bugging me, and let me receive your peace today and always. 
Amen. All right, kids, I hope that was helpful. I hope you have a great Easter. If you're looking for some fun crafts, coloring pages, word searches, go to our website at legacychurch.online slash kids. Have a parent help you and you guys could do some of these things together and have lots of fun celebrating Easter. All right, guys, happy Easter. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Happy Easter, Legacy Church. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hey, happy Easter from Brittany and I to you guys. We just want to say thank you for all that you are doing to keep Legacy up and running and growing during this time. We want to say we love you. We're praying for you. And happy Resurrection Day.